Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about error management within your ETL process and within the jobs you build and the workflows that you're going to be building. Now, uh, as part of the ETL, if you build a job, uh, execute that job, more often than not, uh, there will be errors. Not because you intend for the jobs to have errors, but because errors usually just happen. Right, so maybe a file is not present when you're expecting the file to be present. Uh, some field is not the way you expected the field. Data doesn't show up. And so part of the ETL process, a large part of the ETL process is anticipating errors and handling those errors so that you know you don't have a situation where your job fails catastrophically. So even if your job fails, uh, you come in the morning, you want to be able to look at it and have some idea about what caused it or what caused the issue. Uh, so you can go ahead resolving that issue. And that whole process, the whole uh, art, right? Is it an art or a science? I, I usually think it's an art just because um, you, you're going to have to use different techniques uh, to employ in order to ensure that you have a very robust job and workflow uh, so that when it fails, uh, you uh, can deal with it in the correct way uh, without you know being in the, in the blank and having no idea what was going on. So this, um, this part of the lecture would really focus around error management and generating warnings. Trust me, it might look like this is not an important part of the process, but you know, the last thing that you want to have happen is, you know, you're home on a Sunday night, there's a critical job that needs to run by Monday morning. Your boss calls you and says, hey, that job has failed. And now you got to jump into your computer uh, on Sunday evening and spend the entire night uh, trying to debug this uh, job uh, just because you did not build it in the right way. That, that's very painful, and it does happen. A lot of people will tell you it happened. So in order to avoid it, make sure we understand error management and how to deal with it in the cases where it does happen. Now, that said, we're going to switch over back to studio and continue with the process of building or looking how we can integrate error uh, handling and error management into the different jobs within within talent so um the first thing that we're going to start doing is talking about what we have available for error management let's switch over to the palette area we can see there's a category called logs and error and what this allows us to do is to capture certain properties about our jobs and there is a, a long list of components here uh, and be able to log those properties some of which is assert assert is if we're trying to assert that something has happened in order to then make something else happen, uh, we can do that uh, using assert. Let me just do one thing here. Uh, what I just did was I used the control F key a button, which is a shortcut. So click on control F key by when you select a particular component here, click control F key on your key tab. What it does is it brings you to this part of the palette is a help document so you can see all the definitions about a particular component directly within your studio environment so if I select assert from the word or what bench just give me one second here and once we click that we can see uh, the details of that particular component and that way directly from within studio you can read up on the particular details. So say here, I do have a job failure. I can click on that and I can see the definition of what that component is about. And I can drill down into seeing what the component does and how to look it right from within studio. Let's look at job log here, for example. We can expand that one as well. We can read about the particular property. So just one tip to have under your tool belt uh, as you're working with components, if you're not familiar with them, you have the health guide uh, available right from within studio for you. Now, going back to the logging, we have assert, we have a chronometer stat. A chronometer, if you think about it, watch timing. Uh, that way you can, uh, if you have a job that might be running and you wanna figure out how long it takes to run, one of the things that you can do is to, you know, start the chronometer when the job runs, you know, half your flow. And at the very end, you stop the chronometer when the job has ended. That way you can see how long the job takes, right? You might have a job that takes one hour, three hours, five hours to run. 
uh, you want to keep track of how long it takes to run over a period of time maybe make some changes and then monitor how those changes affect the time that it runs so that that's something very very important to uh, pay attention to another one is TDI so you might do an assertion and if the assertion uh, doesn't come out the way you want you might use the TDI component to um, to stop the workflow so that the, the remaining part doesn't run and then of course we have the T flow meter and the T flow meter catcher so this really is um, monitoring the flow and what it does that it catches it figures out how many records are coming through your flow and it catches them right and i'm going to show this here in a little bit those that are in action same with t lock uh, lock and, and lock uh, lock catcher as well as uh, t uh, start catcher this allows us to look at our locks and cache them or look at statistics and and cache them so uh, um very very powerful and common tools that are being used as well as T1. So, uh, in addition to die, you might just want to put a warning out. A warning is a message. Uh, you might want to put that warning out uh, if something doesn't happen. So, the T1 is a component that you would use for that. Let's switch back over to Studio. I have a couple of jobs here that are opened. And what we'll do is we'll take a look uh, at it. The first one we have is assert. So, the T assert sends a non blocking uh, trigger to the asset catcher right so whenever you have this if you notice this it's not connected to this so depending on what the condition is in my assert uh this would be triggered uh for this flow to run so let's um let me look at the first component i'm selecting my test one equals one what happens this is going to be true well so this is going to run one not equals one equals zero well that's false so because that's false it's going to trigger my my asset catcher to run right so that's going to trigger my asset catcher to run so you can use this you can put this somewhere maybe there's a condition you want to check to say if file exists or if uh, some condition has been met based on some context variables then tr run execute your your flow by the t start catcher to initiate the flow and if that condition hasn't been met don't execute uh, the catcher so in here in the catcher we're making sure that we're catching the t assert in addition to t java exception but really t assert is what we want to catch so if i run this flow uh, it's going to run because this condition will be true this condition is going to be false now uh, we generate an assert uh, assertion uh, error you see it failed on assert 2 because asset 2 should be this component so that component failed because one does not equal zero and uh, hence now we trigger the t asset catcher which simply forces uh send the message that we have to be printed down screen here so very straightforward stuff uh you can get really complex with this in your, in your flows the next thing that we want to move to is the chronometer you know how we talked about you know being able to figure out or measure the time basically on how long it takes to run a job so you can put this at the beginning of the job to see when the job started and so you do something in between and the job ends you want to put this at the very tail end of your job to say uh when the job ends so it stops the chronometer now in between we can figure out how long it took this job to run here i've just put in a simple component called t sleep this is just a component to wait to you know let time go by i can have some complex flow in here uh, before putting my my t chronometer at the end but this T sleep would sleep for let's change this to 15 seconds. So what happens is once I run this job, the T chronometer starts and it passes it to the sleep. The sleep is slept for one, two, or two, 50 seconds. It's gonna sleep for uh, 15 seconds. And then at the very end, when it wakes up, when it's done sleeping, it's gonna give this over. And now we're gonna cash the time back and so what we're printing on the screen is how long it took for this job to run so if you had a complex process in here and you wanted to monitor how long it takes a job to run uh, this is what you want to be using the t stat at t chronometer will allow you to do all of those very easily now the next thing is uh, the flow meter the flow meter allows us to catch the volumetrics uh, that's the term you might see use uh here used uh, the volumetrics or the amount of data that has been processed uh within your flow so let's rearrange things here a little bit 
and what we do is uh, we have a sub job here a sub uh, uh, a sub job here which tells us uh, sets up the, the catcher for us so here I'm simply saying in this job I want to catch uh, my flow meter so all we do is just simply bring this to the screen and then log the results out now within my flow what I'm this what this company here is doing is generating uh, some random data for us T row generator this is a very versatile component if you just want to generate some random data uh, you can use that component uh, to generate some random data right and if I edit the row generator to see how we've set it up so I'm getting some three columns and these are all date date uh, uh, values and so I'm generating random values for date and I'm generating a hundred of those values so this is a component where if you're just trying to do quick tests you want to generate some random data uh, you can definitely use that to generate random data now I'm passing that through a flow meter so what this flow meter does is it counts it counts the amount of of uh, of data that is coming through and before I'm writing that to a file before my results get written to a file so when I run this job I can get an idea of how many records were processed in here so let's go ahead update this really quick so we can run this job and see what the result looks like okay we have an error on that file we should take a look at it oh, there you go all right so there you go there you have it so this job uh, run the flow meter as you can see it's captured let's just scroll over to the right it's captured the count one of the things that the flow meter gives us is the count of the record that has gone through so if you want to log this i'm just printing this to the screen right here but you can save this to a database you can save this to a file that way you can over time see how your job is performing so there's a lot of other metrics that it captures but the thing that we really care about is the count of data that comes through that flows through this particular component so how much data leaves this component and flows to this component the way you measure that is by using the t-flow meter and to the left side in the outline view we talked about this where you can also see what attribute so we want to look at the flow meter uh, uh, component as well you can also see the attributes that are coming uh, from here uh, this is a flow meter and this is the, the the output component you can see the number of lines and the way you can capture some of those values is also by using this and you can pull those into you into context variables and things like that now uh, the next thing that we want to talk about is so we've talked about flow meter we've talked about actually running the job with flow meter catcher here it's all the same the last thing i want to talk about is the stats uh stats catcher similar to the flow meter we're capturing statistics about uh the job so we can go ahead and run this everything is the same we're generating some random data we're doing some unique roles making sure the data is unique and then we're writing that to a file uh, nothing different again with each of these catchers you always set your catcher part of it and then you run it but what you will notice is in this case i don't have a t stat catcher somewhere within my components and why is that right so let's switch back over it's because here if you go down to job uh, stats catcher on the stats uh, we can set it up to catch those those information as well and either write it to screen or write it to file right so you can persist that to a file or to a database if you wanted to you're just gonna simply have to create a database connection and provide the names to the tables in there as well as you know catching those errors at runtime so that's that's one way you can do it uh i usually i'll leave this blank uh just because we've already defined the catching here if you didn't do that physically you can always make sure that you set up these properties here and you get a very uh you get the same result so if you go ahead and run this we should be able to catch some statistics uh stats catcher some stats about our information about the uh, flow 
again you can look at the statistics that have been captured the job id the job version the duration uh, message the id the parent id root id so these are all information uh, that you can get and log into a database and maybe use for reporting which job is running and what are the errors that you're getting from it so you can see we're getting it from t stat catcher so that's what is giving us this all this information so uh, there are several ways when it comes to logging and error handling to really uh, deal with it within talent to make sure that you have your robust flow i can as well i didn't mention this but i can you know do all of that and say hey uh, when this job is done go ahead uh if that component okay send out a warning and in the warning i can just simply put out a message that way if my job runs anywhere it runs and this warning gets triggered i can see that information on the screen the, and you can really get flexible in terms of how you use that i can say hey run this if uh, this component is not okay actually let's do it on the very first component if this component uh has an error kill the job right so if that component if this component has an error kill the job before everything here even happens right and so these are certain things that you can start implementing in your flow to make sure that you're building uh the right flow and really having everything work the way it should it should be so logs and error a very versatile part of of of, um, of the talent studio environment something that doesn't always come up but believe me as you start building jobs that you need to take to production and deploy uh, these are things that you have to be aware of you absolutely have to be aware of right so if somebody comes in and, and asks you you know which job ran how much data was processed you can capture all of that information and then where you go is you're going under the jobs configuration tab you're going under stats and logs uh, you want to always set up those those settings there you can set it up in the project and then use a project setting so if i if i don't want to do this for every single job i just want to set it up as a project setting i can do that so save to project setting it will save to your project setting and then you can now just use that within uh within your flow so something very powerful and very versatile to be aware of now that brings us to the end of the error management uh where we've talked about catching logs volumetrics statistics about your jobs you can save those to files you can save those to databases um, and you can have much insight into your jobs as they run now in the next lecture we're gonna switch our gears a little bit and we're gonna talk about generic uh, schemas how do we create generative schemas and how do we uh, use those we talked about that in the, uh, in some previous lecture but this particular piece of it will focus just on the generic schemas and how powerful they can be see you next time